Hello and welcome everybody on a new edition of Mantis Development Update for our community of ETC. In this edition, we'd like to present to the community the following topics. Myself, David, will speak about the general project update. Dom will give more detailed insight on the project work that has been completed on the last couple of weeks. And then Bogdan and Anastasia will present a demo of a couple of functionalities that they have been implementing in our Mantis client. As a general update, um, I would like to say that we want to increase the release of our cadence so we can give our community on a more frequent basis the improvements and functionalities we are developing to be able to test them on our Sagano testnet. In order to do so, we have been working on the test automation to decrease our manual testing and give a safety net for our developers to know when we break something. Also, Mantis documentation content has been growing. We have newer how-to documentation. They are on the latest stage of review and they will be published shortly in our Mantis doc section of our product website. And at last, I'd like to speak about the efforts the team has been putting into being able to spin up your own private network. So we are able to test certain big features in an isolated way. This setup later can be used by the dev community to run their own development and testing networks. Handing over to Dom, that will give us more insight about the project. Thanks, David. Let's get to it. In the past few weeks, we wrapped up quite a few topics. A lot of scenarios were covered in the area of test automation for the wallet application. This mechanism will be used to keep the wallet application consistent over releases. This suite will grow as new features are introduced to the wallet. Blacklisting and branch resolving during fast sync is available on a feature branch. The whole fast sync improvement effort will be merged into develop in the coming weeks. Additional metrics were added to and merged to develop. The easiest way to see them in action is to follow the tutorial section, locally build and run monitoring client in the project's GitHub readme. We also invested effort in verifying that the client is a drop-in replacement for other clients in a pooled mining usage scenario. We have some improvements in mind, but the basic mechanics are in place and ready to use. Beyond that, the work on checkpoint, checkpointing still continues. At the moment, we are dealing with inconsistencies in how regular blocks and checkpointing blocks are being handled. In the fast sync area, we are focusing on the ability to download the chain state in parallel. As mentioned, we are working on more scenarios covering wallet functionalities. And part of the effort to make Mantis stable and of high quality is to cover the application with automated test scenarios. Currently, we're working on a suit that will show checkpointing behaving according to specification. Yet another effort in the never-ending reach for quality and stable operation is to work on enabling tests of Mantis with the Ethereum test suit. Historically, this has been in place, but became out of sync with recent code changes. The goal is to have the automatic mechanism that keeps the team and the application honest. That means following the Ethereum specification. To improve the visibility of developed changes, we asked our devs to prepare short demos. First, we'll start with Bogdan. He is showing off the get proof functionality. Take it away. OK, let's try to describe uh, this uh, proposal, the get proof uh, future. Uh, get proof is a way to verify the data of a certain account. And in order to allow this verification um, outside the client, uh, an additional function uh, uh, is needed, or an, yeah, an API in this case. And this is also the motivation while you can read through this proposal. Uh, getting to the specification, uh, what we have in the payload is uh, a data, uh, the address of the account, the address associated with the account, the storage keys, meaning that this is intended for contract accounts, uh, if that makes sense, where the contract data resides basically, and that's the storage uh, route, and the block number, or we can use latest or earliest as we want. 
what what is returning what we get is uh, some information regarding that account like the balance the code hash non storage hash uh, the account proof and the storage proof <clears throat> and this is, is where we come to uh, the important part of this of this feature the account proof and the storage proof or the proof within the storage proof uh, because well let's have a small uh, background uh, of what what these are proof and what is the data structure that we are uh, uh, using so we have the the modified patricia tree and it consists of four types of nodes one is blank and it's an empty node uh, the other one is a, uh, an extension node and it's a key value but the value is a hash of another node a branch node uh, and that's a bit different 17 elements 16 hex characters and a value and what we are actually looking for is the leaf node that has the key value uh, association that we are actually searching uh, here or within this whole object because this is the account so the proof consists of a key uh, and uh, the, the value found at this key and all the nodes and this is stored in the account proof and in this proof within the storage proof so we need all the nodes traversed to reach the value okay so the, the proof shows that uh, the tree has the given value uh, at the end point of a given path and this is possible this verification is possible because the the hashes of all all nodes going up are dependent on one another okay so it can be calculated uh, going out so uh, well I created a, a contract account and I have an account here so we, we are we, we can verify this somehow so I have an account I'll copy the account and I'm going to insomnia to to query this this API okay so I will this is basically um, uh, the externally owned account so in this case we will not have a storage proof because we don't have uh, data related to a contract so this is mm, not necessarily useful in this case so if we send it we I have the client running of course we get um, the result and the result is actually the account proof and this is what I was saying earlier is basically uh, the array of all the hash um, nodes that, that are being traversed to find this this final value in this case the account the balance and the balance is not empty as you saw it uh, um, earlier code hash storage hash and storage proof in this case storage proof is empty of course externally on the account the key is zero okay if we change um, if, if we put a random key we will find a random key here uh, the proof will be empty of course because it's an it's, it's there's nothing there and the value will be a default value of zero because no value was found based on this key now what i wanted to show also is basically if we don't find the address and we change a small character here uh, we receive actually an, an error no account found for address in the block number uh, and this is also the behavior of the other clients so we don't actually want to return anything if uh, if the address is not there now it's a bit different for uh, a contract account and a contract account i think i have it ready yeah the contract address here uh, there's a this is a transaction that i did um, earlier okay so if we search for this one okay let's see we do find find an account and again uh, same behavior this is the account proof so it's the array of nodes the balance and in this case is zero because it's a contract account when, when i created i didn't uh, actually set uh, the, the balance so by default is zero 
a storage has and storage proof. Now this is changing here because it's a contract account. It has some data inside the storage root. And uh, based on this key, there's no value, of course, because it's, a, it's just a random key. Didn't find anything, but the proof is different because the proof will always return something in, uh, in case of, uh, uh, let's say, a storage proof. Because there will, for a contract account, there will always be something there. So in this case, we return the root node. But if we have a key here that uh, actually points to to a value uh, that that exists uh, inside the storage root, then this proof will be similar to what we see in the account proof, meaning that it will go from the root node all the way down to the leaf node where we can actually see and query the value uh, expected. Next is a demo by Anastasia. She's showcasing the ongoing work on the peer discovery algorithm. Hi guys, my name is Anastasia and I'm a part of the Mantis team. I'm a developer and I wanted to show you something that I've been working on in the past spring, and it was mainly performance improvements. And in particular, it was improving the peer discovery algorithm. Uh, so as you know, when the, the client is up and running, it tries to connect to other nodes and usually discovers lots of them, but not all of them are suitable for connection. So we wanted to improve the successful rate of connections with this feature. Uh, and mainly it was done by changing two things. And one is uh, increasing the time we blacklist some of the nodes. And it can be nodes uh, with incompatible uh, protocols or from other networks. And we know for sure that this, this is not going to be changed in near a couple of hours. So then we know that we can safely blacklist them for some time some hours uh, so this was one part and the second part is um, about first going through the the whole list of nodes that we discovered before we retry the ones who failed before and um, yeah that's that that's it that's what I did and I wanted to showcase this somehow and the only thing that I came up with is just to run the nodes run the Mantis client before the change and after the change. Uh, so you can see in the logs how many successful connections were established after the set amount of time. And I pre-recorded this because otherwise we would have to sit here for like 45 minutes waiting for the results. Because yeah, that's the time frame that I chose for it. So I'm just gonna present the yeah, the video I made the uh, showcasing that and here it goes uh, so on the left uh, is the client before the change and on the right is after i was running it both for 45 minutes and uh, checking in then how many peers were successfully connected out of the peers that were just discovered and in both cases, discovered nodes were like uh, 4,200, something like that. And successful ones were four in a, yeah, handshake is four on the left uh, side and six on the right one. And uh, out of the approximately the same amount of discovered nodes, it means 50% improvement in, um, into a successful connection. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, the same result as I got while testing the feature. And I ran it like multiple times, uh, one hour in one hour time frames, And it was approximately the same. It was 55% improvement. Um, so yeah, this is it. That's what I wanted to show you. And um, my update is over. So I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Great stuff. I need to mention here that these improvements are part of an overall effort to have Mantis be quicker at synchronizing and discovering more of the network consistently. That's it from me, David. Back to you. Thank you, Dom.
And remember to join our social media channels for our latest news and updates. You can find the link below on the video description. Until our next dev call, bye.